Hello everyone, my name is Ahmed and in this video we will be doing assignment 7. Uh, assignment 7 is a continuation of the previous video which is note 6b. We did this together in the last video and to be able to do assignment 7 you must have a working project file for this PDF, so the first PDF, the note PDF. Okay, so this was the last part. It was adding the amount column in the um, the carts controller, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay, so we're going to jump into assignment 7. So yeah, this is the same project file, shopping cart project. So let's pick up where we left off. So the first step uh, in this question here, it says that if you run the application and type one of these URLs in the browser, it's going to work. This indicates that there must be an authorization for the class cart. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that let's say that I am uh, a user and I'm not, sorry, I'm not logged in. So I went into the website and I didn't create an account. I didn't log in. This means that these pages should not work because I'm not logged in. So I don't have a, 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 a cart. I don't have anything. So it should ask us to log in. This is why we need the authorization attribute added to the cart class. Okay, let's just uh, check if the, if the link works or not. So let's just give it a few. Yeah, see, I'm logged in. So now that I'm logged in, if I go to carts, uh, sorry, carts, it should work. But if I log off and I go to carts again, it shouldn't work because I'm not logged in. My cart, this also, okay, this is working because it's using the transaction controller. Excuse me, sorry. But this is the carts controller and this is letting us in, which is not right. So how do you fix it? To add the authorization for the class, you go to the class, so carts controller, okay, this is the class that we're talking about. We must add an authorization attribute, so authorize, to be able to uh, prevent users from entering any of these pages if they're not logged in, if they're not authorized, okay? And we're going to add a few more... Um, authorization uh, techniques that will help us a lot in the future project. So number one, let's say that a user goes into someone else's cart. Okay, I'm going to give you a demonstration now. So let's, uh, let's launch this and uh, let's give it a try. And we're also going to check the the authorized attribute, see if it works or not. So let's just wait for it to load. And there we go. So if I go to cart, it should ask me to log in. There we go. Okay. So this is the right thing. Now, let's say I uh, make a new user. We're going to name him Taha, Taha at gmail.com. Uh, the password, TT. Uh, Three, four, five, six, and then three, four, five, six, like so. Register, and we're gonna save the password. There we go. Thank you. Okay. So now that we have another user. We can go to products and let's uh, buy something. Let's buy toothpaste. And I also need a fridge. So let's go back to products. I need a fridge. There we go. So we have two items in our cart and we can log off. Okay. Now that we've done this, if I log in as Ahmed, which is my other account, like so, and I go to my cart, as you can see, basically this is just the details page with the ID of the cart. Let's say I go to ID number two. This will show us Taha's cart, which is not safe. This shouldn't have. This shouldn't be happening. So, this should only give us access to our own carts. Okay. So, how do we fix this? 
Now, this is not required in the, the assignment. It just says authorization, but this is something that we need to think about. This is very important. So let's go back to um, the, uh, the shopping cart. The, sorry, the carts controller. Scroll down to the details action because that's what we're trying to fix. So details, 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 details. Where is it? I think I missed it. Create. There we go. Details. Okay. So this is the action that we're trying to um, handle. So here, after finding the cart, before sending this or this, like the view of the cart, we should do our own check to see if this cart belongs to the signed in user. So how do we do that? Well, we use the user.identity. So the first step is getting the username of the signed in user. So a string uh, username equals user, capital U, dot identity dot name. This is the same that uh, that we did last, uh, same thing we did last, uh, last video. So we're just going to put it here. And then for the cart, before we give the user the details page, the details of that cart, we should check something. We should check to see if the cart belongs to this user. So what we do is we do um, if cart dot customer or cu sorry customer name equals equals username uh, sorry does not equal so we don't we want it that like it doesn't equal the user so if if the cart does not belong to the user then we're gonna return an error message. So we're going to copy this. This is an error message, an error page, sorry. And instead of bad request, we're going to do forbidden. So forbidden. It's, uh, I think, 40403. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, save this, restart, and uh, see if this fixes the problem of accessing other people's, um, other people's carts in the details action so this is only for the detail details action okay so let's wait for it to load there we go and we should log in i'm gonna log in as ahmed remember uh taha's cart has the id of the number two so the number two is the id of taha's cart okay so if i go to um my cart this is carts details one. This is mine. Okay. If I write number two, it should give me a 403 error forbidden. It says that you don't have permission to view this directory or page. So this is great. It's working perfectly. Okay. So this is only for the details page. Now we have to do the same thing for other pages. Like for example, the delete page, sorry, the delete action, because we don't, we don't want someone else to delete my cart. Like, I don't want to wake up in the morning, go to the website, and find out that my cart has been deleted. Like, all my things that I have added last night were deleted. So, we have to check before we delete anything. So, we're going to use the same exact code that we just wrote in the details page. And by the way, you can copy and keep it in your notes to use in the exam. So, we're just going to copy this code over here copy it like so and then paste it in the delete page so after getting the cart we're gonna check the username and if it does not equal the username then it's gonna return a forbidden uh, we don't have the username in this method so we're gonna add the username string username equals user dot identity dot user uh, sorry name okay wonderful so now that we have the authorization thingy on the delete and the details page now we have something else to do uh, 
so go back to the PDF. So we've done details, we've done delete. Now we have the create and index. No one should be able to access the create. Okay, so for the create, create, there we go. No one should be access. No one should be able to access this action over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the add the authorization attribute again, but this time we're gonna write um, user equals. Oh, sorry. Let's add this one. I, I forgot the. There we go. So user users equals and then admin at admin at admin dot com so this means that this directory or this action is only accessible by this email so if your email matches this one then you're allowed to enter this page if not it's gonna ask you to log in again log in as this user of course Okay, so let's give it a try. Uh, actually, before we stop the process, uh, we should go here and we should try the the, uh, the create. See if it lets us let, lets us in. So create. See, you can add new customers and you can change the status or create your own status, which is a major security flaw. Now we're gonna close out of this and we're gonna test this code that we just added, this attribute that we added. Again, this is only for the create. So we secured the details page, we secured the delete page, and we are now securing the create page or the create action. Okay. And in the last, uh, the last video, we secured the index. So this one, we forced it to only show the carts of the logged in customer. Okay. So here we go. Let's go to carts and then create. It should not allow us to. There we go. It's, it's asking us to log in. Okay. Actually, maybe it's because I'm not logged in. So even if I log in, so I'm currently logged in. Come on. Yeah, it says hello, Ahmed. Uh, if I go to carts again and create. It's going to ask us to log in even though we're, we're already logged in because it's expecting the admin to be uh, logged in, not you. If you're logged in, this page will not open up for you. Okay, so now that we're done, the index again is already secured. Everything is secure now. We can move on. So the next, uh, oopsie, <laughs> sorry, the next step is... Uh, modifying the details page of the cart controller so it says that when, when you click my cart on the menu uh, cart details will be displayed and the details of the cart contains the edit and back to back to list links okay if you click edit the following page will be displayed so the customer should not be able to edit the cart and change the name or the status of the cart so how do we fix this well same thing we're gonna go back to the uh back to the controller so the first thing to do now i know here it says that you have to remove the edit link we're gonna do that but before we do let's assume that the customer is smart enough to change the url and just write edit so let's go back my cart okay so uh if the customer does this like instead of details writes edit it's going to take him to th to this page even if there is, there is no edit button over here so if we remove this the button itself from the user interface the user can simply go here and write edit so we have to secure it we do have to prevent the user from accessing this page so what we're going to do is we're going to go to we're going to copy the same exact code so this one because only the admin should be able to access the edit page. So we're going to go here and paste this line of code. Now the edit page is going to be only accessible by the admin. Okay. And let, let's just do the rest and then we can restart the, 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 restart the, the application to double check if it's working or not. So the customer shouldn't be able to edit the cart. We should go to the details of the customer 
uh, sorry the, the cart so cart details and here instead of yeah there we go edit we're gonna remove this we don't want this to be here I'm just gonna comment this out because I don't like to delete things <laughs> and back to list should be ch changed to view all carts so let's change this to view all carts oops carts okay which points to cart index so index of the cart controller and then we're going to add a new column called amount which is basically the quantity times the price of the product okay so this is done in details.cshtml so the, the, the user interface of the details the view of the details uh, we're going to go here first thing to do we have to add a uh, header a new header so we have the product name product price and quantity i'm going to show you actually it's better to visualize it than just say it uh, this will throw an error so i have to give it the id like so okay so this is how the page looks like come on come on I think it's going to ask us to log in, yeah, because I'm not logged in. Come on. There we go. So this is the, the details page. We removed the edit and we changed the text of the back to list to view all cards. Now we should add an amount uh, column. So these are the columns, the, the, the header columns. So product name, product price, quantity, product name, product price, quantity. We should add a new one called uh, uh, total amount. Okay. If we refresh, it's going to show us this new, uh, header, but then we have to add the data itself. So here you can see the D TD, TD, TD. So table data, this is a data cell. So we're going to add a TD and inside this TD, we're going to multiply the quantity or multiply the product price by the quantity. So we're gonna do item, I'm gonna add parentheses. So item dot product dot price times item dot quant oops quantity. There we go. Okay. Now if we refresh the page it should show us the amount. If you want to add some text after it, you can just add it like so. So QR, which is the currency. There we go. QR. Same with the product price. You can add QR just to make it look uh, better. Okay. Cute. Anyways. So now now that we're done with all the uh, all these um, requirements, we can scroll down to the next one. So here we have to <coughs> display the total amount of the cart and this is calculated in the details action method and should be displayed using a view bag so this means that in this page over here the details page it should show you under this under the table it should show you the total amount of your carts so let's say I add something else like uh, a fridge maybe yeah I still need a fridge okay it should show you the total amount here so the amount of all the items and it should be calculated in the <coughs> details action method so let's head over to the uh, details action method details action method where is it carts controller details where is details there we go okay so this is the details page um, we should calculate it here so before we return the view we're gonna calculate it here so we're gonna make a new variable call it a uh, total uh, price equals zero okay and then total price is gonna equal to uh, the cart so we are gonna do the cart dot items so we have to get the items of that cart so cart items and then we have to get the sum so sum we, we, we need to add things up together so sum 
I'm going to do P, which indicates product. So for each product, what we're going to do is we're going to first, uh, yeah, we're going to multiply the price by the quantity and sum it up all together to get the total price. So P dot quantity or no product dot price is easier this way times p dot uh, p dot quantity okay uh, by the way this is also you can use you can get copy this from the previous um, previous PDF I'll show you in a bit let's just turn everything into an integer like so if you go here you should find it there we go this is the same code okay so p p dot quantity and p dot product dot price you just multiply these together and get the sum of all the cart items so this is the total okay so now that we had did this here we should store it in a view bag so let's do view bag dot total price equals total price okay done now we can just restart the the page and we can oh i forgot to add it in the view so let's go to the view sorry let's just uh, keep this on the left so let's go back to the view the details view and under the table we're gonna add a new uh, let's say header or we can do p paragraph whatever you want you can just show it as a text so uh, we're gonna say the total amount of the cart is and then we're gonna add our view bag so view bag dot uh, total price and then we're gonna add the currency so QR like so I think it's a lowercase t so now we can go to my cart and we should see the total price, the total amount. There we go. 7,198, which is the sum of these two together. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. So, uh, back to assignment seven. We're done with this one. We can move on to the next one. So we have to add a link to update the profile. This will take you to the customer slash edit page. Okay, and it's going to pass the customer ID. We're not going to add this one. Sorry, we're not going to add it here in the shared login partial because uh, Mr. Fathi told us to, to add it in the, the cart details page. So in this page, you should see a button here somewhere that takes you to update your profile. And when you update your profile, you should see the name that you have inputted here inside uh, on the, uh, next to the name um, field. Okay, so we're gonna add it in the customer details page. So here, let's add it here uh, under um, this. We're gonna add a new line. Yeah, we co I copied this one, and I'm gonna change the content. So we're gonna change the uh, the link text. So link text. We're gonna change it to update profile, and we should go to the so action name. We want to add. The controller name, so link text, action name, and then controller name. So we should, yeah, we're gonna change it like this. Okay, uh, this helps a lot. So if you just do something and hover over one of these or here, hover over the the, the name of the method, it's gonna it's gonna show you what it's expecting. So now, when, when, after I added the commas. It's expecting to have a link text. This is shown to the user. And then the action name. So basically, you don't have to memorize all of this. This is already given to you. So you have to use the IDE to its full potential. So the action name and the controller name. Before, it only allowed us to have two. So the link text and the action name. 
this it says here that it, it takes nine overloads so after you add a comma it's gonna update the list for you it's gonna show you what's what it takes okay so this is better now again first one is link text second is action name so the action name is gonna be edit and action name is gonna be edit and the controller name is gonna be customers or custom yeah it's customers and the next field or the next parameter is the route values so we have to pass in the ID of the customer so we're gonna do um, uh, new ID equals the model so we have the model dot customer name okay or you can do customer dot ID or username which is the ID so username this is the ID of the customer okay but there uh, it's gonna give us an error now I'm gonna show you how to fix it in a bit so let's uh, let's give it a try let's go back to the uh, the page and let's refresh the page we should see the update profile button is right here if you click on it it's gonna take us to the customers page the, sorry the customers controller and then the edits action and it's gonna pass in the right value the, the customer ID but it says here that it's not found to fix this issue we have to add a forward slash at the end and it should fix it so how do we do this right here so basically the ID is the customer name the username sorry and we have to add this like so so this is called concatenation you're gonna add a forward slash at the end of the username so this will fix the issue hopefully if we go back to this page okay and we try to update the profile it's gonna add it automatically and it's gonna work now we can change the name of the user so I'm gonna say Ahmed Yusuf like so and then address Rayyan save it and okay he, uh, I'll, I'll fix this issue right now in a bit so let's just go to my cart and as you can see the name here is Ahmed Yusuf the name of the customer okay so let's go back and there we go so it says here that from the customer edit you cannot go back to cart details as you require to pass the cart ID and we don't have it in this method so how do we fix this we fix this by changing the back to list to back to my cart and we have to change where it's pointing to so here it must point to transaction and then the my cart action I'll show you what this means so if we go back to the edit page so up to, up, update profile if we go back to list it's gonna take us to this list the customers list we don't want this we don't want the um, the website to show us a list of all the customers we can by the way we can add the authorization here later but for now let's just fix this issue so instead of back to list we're gonna change it to back to my cart and make it point to transactions slash my cart okay so go to the customers and then edit page in edit page and in this page we should scroll down and yeah instead of back to list pointing to the index first we're going to change the, te uh, the text to back to my cart and then we shouldn't be pointing to the index we should be be pointing to the my cart method inside the transactions controller which is this one the one that we added at the end so my cart okay it's inside the transactions controller so go back here sorry here edit and if we put our mouse over the action link method it says here that it's only taking two parameters link text and action name so we already know the action name the action name is my cart but there's an issue here because this is pointing to the same controller the customer controller okay so we have to specify the name of the controller so if you add a comma 
it's going to be expecting the route values. We don't want this. Add another comma, it's going to be expecting an HTML attributes. So again, link text, action name, route values, and HTML attribute. We need the controller. So add one more, and you can see here that now it takes the link text, action name, controller name, and then the, the rest of the non or useless things. So we're going to give it null for both the route values and HTML attributes. So null here and null here. Here we have to specify the the name of the the name of the controller. So transaction like so. Okay? Now, if we go back and refresh the page, it should say back to my cart and I if I press click on it, it's going to take me back to my cart, which is wonderful. Okay? Now, back to the PDF. So <clears throat> we have to add uh, we're almost done by the way. We have to add a checkout link that will jump to transaction checkout. We don't have the checkout yet, but we're going to add it in a bit. And we also have to pass the cart ID. So the ID of the cart. Anyways, so let's add a link checkout and let's jump to transaction checkout. Go back to the yeah, this has to be added in the uh, the cart details page, okay? Just an FYI. So, cart details. Cart details. And here, under the table, we're going to add a new button, or new action link. So, HTML dot action link. And first thing again is the link text so let's give it a link text check out and the next thing is the action name so the name of the action is uh, check out and it's located in the transactions controller we're gonna we're not gonna go through the transactions controller okay by the way, for the for this part over here, you don't have to add these null values, okay? But I was just trying to explain how things work, uh, like under the hood, okay? So this was just an FYI. You don't have to add these, okay? So go back to the details page, and yeah, we're sorry. This is there we go. Transaction. And if we try to go back to the page, we should see the checkout button. We can also add some styling to it. So uh, we don't have to, but let's add it just for the gist of it. So class equals, sorry, there we go. New class equals button and then button danger, maybe. So this will give us a red button. There we go. Check out. Okay. And now it said that the... Uh, okay. So first of all, we don't have an action called checkout. Second of all, we forgot to pass in the ID of the cart. It says, has, it says here that we have to pass the cart ID. So we're going to add a new... So I'm just going to remove this one and put it here because this is the... If we go back here, this is the, what am I doing here? Uh, yeah, here, here is where we're going to pass in the, the, the cart ID. So new ID equals, ID equals, uh, model dot ID. So the model here is the cart itself. So the model is the cart itself. So model the ID is the ID of that cart. Okay, and this is just the styling, the HTML attributes. By default, this is null. This is this does not exist. Okay, but we added this because we wanted it to look better, and we want to feel special. Anyways, so if we check out now, it's gonna take us to the checkout, and it's gonna give us the ID of the cart, which is good. Now, we can start by programming the checkout action.
Okay, so go back to the transactions controller. And here we're going to add a new action. Action results. Results. We're going to call it check out. And we're going to be taking an ID. So an integer, which is the ID. This question mark means that it might be null. So it could be null. Okay. It might not be given. And yeah, now that we have the checkout, it's saying here that this is our code, by the way. So we're going to copy the error checking from the cart details method. Is there an ID? So basically, this is telling us to copy the error checking code from the carts controller, which is this one here, this error checking thingy. OK, we want to check to see if the cart ID is given or not, first of all. And then we need to check if the cart actually exists. OK, and we also need to check if the cart belongs to that user. So we're going to copy all of this. <laughs> so yeah, all of this. And paste it over here. There we go. Now it's checking everything. It's checking first if the ID is null. So if the ID is given or not. If it's not given, it's going to show the user the bad request error. If the ID is given, it's going to check if the cart exists. So if a cart with that ID exists or not. If it if it does exist, then it's going to check if the customer name uh, uh, matches the username or not. OK. So. Yeah, it's going to check if the if, if the cart belongs to that user or not. OK, this should be under this, by the way. I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> because if the cart is null, it's not going to be able to access the customer name from that cart. So I apologize for that mistake. I just realized it. OK, and then the next step is. Uh, do we have a valid cart? So by valid cart, I think it's, it means that uh, it has to check if the status is unpaid. So you can't pay again for an already paid cart. So we have to uh, set it to un uh, set it to paid if it's unpaid. So let's uh, we're gonna directly set it to paid. So cart dot Sorry, that status equals paid. There we go. And then we have to obviously ch save our changes. So ch save changes like so. And last but not least, we have to send the user back to the cart details page. So the paid cart can be seen. Uh, you can just copy this from here because this takes you to the details page. And the ID is the ID of that cart. OK, so let's give it a try and it should work. Yeah, we're almost done. We're at uh, 38 minutes, which is not bad. It can be done quicker, by the way, but you know. doing everything step by step. So my cart, this is our cart. It's unpaid and we have two different items. We can check out and it should, there we go, paid. Now, if I go to view all my carts, there is the paid cart. I can't delete it because it's already paid and I can't edit it. I can only see the details. Okay, wonderful. Now, if I go to product and I buy more products like PlayStation 4, and I go to back to uh, view all carts. I should see two different carts, one on page, which is the current one and the previous one, which is paid. OK, details in here I can check out again. OK, so that's perfect. Now, uh, add checking to check out to see if you if the cart is empty, then display a message in the view 
saying that your cart is empty and do not change the status of the cart to paid. Uh, so what this means is that if my cart is empty, so let's say let's say I don't have this cart. Let's say um, I'm going to check out. And there we go, it's paid. If I go to my cart, this is an empty cart. If I check out, it should give me an error message saying that the cart is empty. Okay, so let's uh, let's do that. How do we do this? So first of all, we're gonna before changing the status over here, we're gonna check. So if cart dot so we have we we have to check if there are any items in the cart. So we do cart dot cart items, and then we have to count the items. So dot count. If the count is zero, so if it's nothing, <clears throat> if it's empty, then we're going to return or take the user back to the uh, the carts page. Sorry, we're going to copy this one. So take it, take him back to the cart to the details page, but we're going to add a new parameter called uh, error, like so. Oops, and we're gonna send him or send the user an error message saying that uh, error your cart is is empty. We can just say your cart is empty without error, okay? Like so, and we have to go back to the carts controller. And in the details page, here we're only accepting the ID. So we have to accept something else, which is the string. Uh, this is supposed to be a comma. String. We're going to call uh, name it error message. Uh, just error message or just error. Okay. And then before returning the user to the page, to the view, we're going to add a new view bag. So view bag dot error equals. the parameter, the error parameter. Okay. So what this will do is that if the error is specified here, it's going to send it to the view bag dot error controller. Okay. So we're going to use that controller. So sorry, we're going to use that view bag to see uh, to get the error message. So if we go to the details page here, okay, and we go up here, we're going to add the error message up. So uh, before the table. So this is the table. Before the table, we're going to add a, um, let's say, just an H3, same as we did for the amount, the total amount. So H3, and we're only going to show this if the view bag is not empty. So we're going to add the this, this razor thingy. So we're going to say if view bag dot error does not equal null then show this show this header uh, h3 and it's gonna say error and it's gonna give us the actual error message so like so okay so if we run the page again I think we're done right yeah we're done this is the last thing. Oopsie, we have something wrong. Oh, yeah, I forgot to add the... Uh... Sorry, this is just bad. Um... Uh, okay, I messed up here. I'm sorry. Let's just go back, 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 back. There we go. I'm sorry, I messed up. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so this should work. So basically, if this returns this redirect, it's not going to go through. It's not going to save. It's not going to change the page. Okay. So this is what we're trying to do. Anyways, let's run the run the application. Give it a try. I'm gonna try to keep this less than 15 minutes long, or less than yeah, less than 15 minutes long. Should be doable. Come on. There we go. So my cart. It's an empty cart. If I try to check out, 
it says here that your cart is empty. It did not change the status. Okay, wonderful. Now we're gonna do something just extra because I'm extra. Uh, go to the details page. We want to style this, so let's just add um, change the h3 to div, and then add the alert class. So alert, and then alert danger. And we can make it dismissible. So alert dismissible. And if we restart the uh, reload the page, there we go. It looks wonderful. If I check out, it's not going to work. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So let's try adding some products and let's add the fridge that I've always wanted. And let's check out. It's paid. There is no error message. We're done. That's that's pretty much it. Okay. Now. There is something that we have to fix. So if I go to products and I add something to my new cart and I go back to view all carts, if I try to delete it, it's not going to delete. It's going to give me this error message shown here. Okay. For you, if you're running without debug, this, sh this should show up. Okay. So the delete statement conflicted with the reference, blah, 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 whatever. So it shows us how to fix it here. So if you click delete, this will cause exception, blah, 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 blah. To fix it, you have to add the foreign key relation FK cart to both cart item and cart table. So we have to add this one. So we add on delete cascade, copy it, uh, go to the database. So we have two different databases. We want the shopping DB entities. Go to the tables that we added at the beginning of the project. So we're going to go to the, to the cart because it says your cart and cart item. So cart. Come on. You know, less than 15 minutes, less than 15 minutes. Let's do it. Come on, please load up. OK, so here in the const, uh, the foreign key, the references, we're going to add on delete cascade and we have to save what did I do? We have to update the table like so. So update and update database. And then do the same for the cart item. Go to cart item. Go to the, uh, I think it's this one. I'm not sure. On delete cascade. We're going to give it a try now. Why do I keep saving? Update and then update database. Let's try loading up the application again or the website and we're going to try deleting something if it works then we're done <clears throat> my cart and then check out oh no okay i i messed up let's add something to the new cart so there we go i have uh, this cart that I want to delete. So delete, delete. Okay, I still have the same error message, so let's try to fix it. Uh, go back to the tables, go to the cart item tables, and I should add on delete cascade to this one as well. This should fix the issue, sorry. This should fix the issue. Uh, we never did this, by the way, in class, so now I, I'm showing you how, and hopefully it works. If it doesn't work, I'm going to uh, keep trying until it does. <laughs> that's, how it, that's how it goes. Come on. Let's hope it works. So my cart and then view all carts to be able to delete. So view all carts and then delete, delete. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We've we've done it. So yeah, that's that's the that's assignment seven. Again, I'm not going to post the solution for this. I'm not going to post the project. So if you want to do it, you can go step by step with me. This is the, the best thing to do. 
honestly it's for your own sake I don't want students to just have the solution ready I want you to, to try to mess around with it make it even more secure try to find some loopholes and try to fix these because in your final product or uh, project you're gonna have to make a secure website so you're gonna have to prevent random users or random hackers or attackers from accessing certain parts of your project or your website okay so yeah this was assignment 7 my name is Ahmed I hope you enjoyed the video uh, if this, if this video was helpful, please like the video, and if you have any questions, you can email me or send me a message on WhatsApp. Thank you, and bye-bye.